I had to say from the mama's point of view because I, could, I can't do that. But what I can do is talk about the influencers, the influencers in our lives. So that is going to be the title of today's lesson, The Influencers. I went by Hobby Lobby yesterday. Y'all know what this is? Can you see it? I'll let you know what it is. This is another tease. I'll let you know what it is later. <laughs> Pastor Woods, I finally did by a computer. Oh. I think I deserve a hand clap for that. <laughs> now y'all learn how to use it more effectively. <laughs> our, our basic lesson is coming from the uh, book of Exodus in the Old Testament, chapter 2. Uh oh, I lost my. So again, I'll say Happy Mother's Day or Happy Influences Day to everyone. And the reason I say this is because, like I said, I'm not a mother, and there are others who are not mothers either. But we are influencers in someone's life. Uh, we've, we've done things and we've said things and we've invested in someone, and we've invested in someone and somebody else has invested into our lives also. So with that being said, let, let me pray, okay? Most precious and all wise God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love and kindness this morning, for awakening us into this beautiful day. Amen. We thank you, Lord God, that we can honor and celebrate those that are our mothers and even those that are influencers in our lives. We realize, God, that nothing can happen unless you allow it to happen. With all the things that are going on in the world, Heavenly Father, we realize that you are totally in control. But we have to recognize who you are, and we lift up the name of Jesus in this place. I ask that the ears that are here, that we will hear what you have to say through the words, through your word, and that not only hear, but we will be doers when we do hear. And Father God, we just bless your name in this place. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. The definition of, influ of influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character the development or the behavior of something or somebody. And today we're going to look at, at Moses and the five influ or maybe six influencers that were involved in his life. Now Moses, we have to, there's no doubt as we go through this list that you may find yourself thinking about how you were influenced or how somebody influenced you throughout this list that we're going to go through today. Now, for background information, out of the Exodus chapter 1, I'm not going to go back and read Exodus chapter 1 or anything from that, but I'm going to refer to it. Um, the Israelites were in Egypt, and they were in captivity, and they were slaves. Uh, and they were slaves, and there became a king that used to appreciate, if I can use that word, the Israelites being there because of Joseph. And you can go back in Genesis and read all of that. But then there came a king that did not care about the Israelites at all. He didn't care about how they got there. He didn't care about what they did for them. He didn't care about anything, but he saw Hebrews all over the place in his kingdom, and he decided, you know what, it's, it's just too many Hebrews in here, I just got to get these folks under control. Mm -hmm. So that's the first influencer, the influence of the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh. You may not, Moses hadn't even been born yet, but what this king decided to do influenced Moses in his life. So this king devised a plan, he and his council devised a plan to slow the birth rate of the Hebrew children. Like I said, you can read that in Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 through 24. So he told the midwives, now he wasn't going to do it himself. How many know that when evil is devised, a lot of times people are invoked to do it. They enlist somebody else to do it. 
So the king told the midwives, listen, kill all the male babies, but let the female babies live. Kill the seed. Try to kill off the seed already. Now, this sounded like a good idea to the, to the uh, council, and so they said, okay, midwives, y'all do your thing. When you birth these babies, when these babies are being birthed on the birthing block, kill them. Now, I, they didn't say how you kill them. They didn't care how they were going to be killed. They didn't care if they smothered them, you know, slit their throat. They, they didn't care. They just wanted the ba babies, the male babies to die. So the midwives didn't obey the king, the, the pharaoh. Mm -hmm. The midwives said, you know, these, these Hebrew women are different than the Egyptian women. Mm -hmm. And so this is the second influencer in the life of Moses. I call this influencer the do-good influencers, doing what is right. In Proverbs, in the NLT Bible, it says, do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to help them. It was in the power and in the hands of those midwives to save those babies. Their conscience couldn't, wouldn't and couldn't let them destroy those male babies. And so there you go. Things are already in motion to see God move. Now, the names of those two uh, ladies, those two midwives, one was Sifra and the other was Poor. There are certain characteristics of a do-good influencer. And let's see if you are, can put yourself or somebody else in this place. They were compassionate to the mothers, and they were doing good, and that pleased God. We find that God, that they feared God, and whenever you fear God, not, not so much like who's shaking, which that's possible, but they reverence God. They, they, they were around the Hebrew women. I don't know if they were Hebrews or not, but they were around them enough to know that their God was, that the Hebrew guys were doing, was doing something good. And that God always, always, always uh, rewards those that please him. So... This is just a brief background to what was going on. And also, they were aware that there was a difference, like I said, between the Hebrew, the way the Hebrew women birthed the babies and the Egyptians. You know, if you're out working a hard life, working and being, um, working hard in your life, sometimes all that exercise and all that movement, and back then, life wasn't like it is today. I think life was harder back then because they had to do a lot of physical, even in the homes, a lot of physical work. So yeah, they probably were different, but God designed them different. So amen for that, everybody. <laughs> Sifra and Poor did the right thing. They said the right thing and at the right time and without fear of punishment. When you, when you are doing something good and something right, a lot of times, sometimes you just do it because it's just innate. It's inside of you to do it. And you don't even think about being punished. Are you doing, are you a good influencer? Are you a do-good influencer? We see that God rewarded them with their own houses. Amen? Amen. Amen. So who has influenced you in your life to do good? They did good for you. I don't care if they loaned you or gave you some money. You might have been low on gas or something, and somebody just slipped you $5. I remember one time I was, I was sitting at a gas station, and I was rambling through my pocketbook looking for some money for gas because I didn't have much, <laughs> didn't much money for gas that particular day. But my head was down, and I looked up, and this man was tapping on my window, and it scared me because it was dusk. And I thought, but my car doors were locked, and I thought, somebody's in my window. That just that quick. And so the man was holding up a little receipt, and he had paid $5 for me to get some gas. Right. I was like, oh. He said, I, he's, I cracked the window about that much, and I, he said, ma'am, I already paid for your gas. He said, all you have to do is just pump it. It's already paid for, and I'm giving you the receipt. So he stuck it through the window. 
That's a do-good person right there, and I'm sure God will bless him. How many times have you gone to a, a drive-thru and um, somebody in front of you paid for your meal? Has that ever happened to you? Amen. Amen. The next influencer that we see is uh, Jacobet. Now, let me go turn into my Bible because y'all think I'm not going to go into my Bible, but I am. And so now we're going to begin at chapter 2 and verse 1. And a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. Do y'all remember this little rhyme that we used to say as kids? Some, some people may not know it. It's you name two people. Say like, you name two people. Pastor Woods and Bianca sitting in the tree. K-I-S-S-N-G. First comes love, then comes marriage. Then comes them with a baby carriage. That's what happened. <laughs> Two people got married, and then they conceived a child. And when this child was born, she, she conceived a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him three months. Now, what was it about Moses that, uh, what was it about this child, because he hadn't been named yet, that looked so different? Sometimes, sometimes you could just look at a person, and they just seem different from you. Different. A uh, lady told me just Friday. She said, there's just something about you. I don't know. And I, I don't know either. I'm just being me. I'm thinking I'm being me. She just kept saying, there's just something about you. And I said, well, praise God. So when, when the daughter of Levi looked at her child, she saw that he was beautiful. And she hid him three months. Now, why did she hide him? Remember, there was an uh, edict out that all the male babies were to be killed. And she knew this. And she hid her child. Now, I don't know how she hid her child, what she did to keep him quiet, what she did. You know, I don't know how she did that, but she did. And she did it not for one month, not for two months, but for how many months? Three. For three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him and daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, Lay and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. So Jacobed, which we hadn't named her yet, but I'm naming her. That's her name. Jacobed, Jacobed Moses' birth mother. She is the real deal. She's the real deal influencer. Mm -hmm. She had discernment because when she looked at her son, she saw that he looked beautiful and that he was special. She was courageous to even hide her child because if she got caught, it would surely mean death for her. She was loving. I mean, you cannot have a child around you for three whole months and not fall in love with your child. As a matter of fact, falling in love was probably the moment of conception. She was patient. It takes patience to deal with people, to deal with children, to deal with other people. She was open-minded because you had to get creative to be able to hide a child for three months. We well, you know when they're young, you can pretty much, they might, might sleep all the time. I don't know. Sleep more. But as they begin to get older, then they get a little more active and a little more vocal. But anyway, she was open-minded and protective. She was also a giver because down in these verses, we're going to find that she not only gave her child away once, but she gave her child away twice. She was also resourceful. She built an ark. Thus comes my little prop here. This is a cattail. All right. um, I went to Hobby Lobby, and I looked up and down, couldn't find one. Then I went down a certain aisle, and there they were, cattails. So a bulrush is kind of like a cattail. And I thought, well, what's so special about a bulrush? Because every time I've ever heard anybody talk about Moses and how he was born, what about the bulrush? A bulrush is, is a type of plant that grows around ponds and stuff at the edges. And they could not only use the bulrush, uh, they could use the bulrush once it dried out, they could eat it. They could use the leaves that produce from it, leaves bigger than that for basket making and making shoes. I said, wow, 
it was very, it was a very resourceful type of bush. So this is what Moses' mother put him down in once she built this ark. But um, Jacobed decided, you know, I'm going to use all the resources I can, all the natural resources. She used her brain to figure out what to do with this, um, to make this ark to put her baby in because she wanted to save the baby. How many people in your life invested in you because they wanted to save you from something? There is somebody in your life that perhaps, I know people that, you know, people want to save you from yourself. Sometimes they want to save you from going down the wrong path of alcoholism or, or just street life or just being a, just a rude, nasty person. People want to save you sometimes, and they intervene into your life. They have to be courageous to intervene because a lot of people don't want somebody to help them. You have to be able to be patient with people and open-minded and be creative and use all the resources that you can to be an influencer, the real deal, in somebody's life. No doubt in her time with her baby, she was perhaps speaking to him, singing to him, and teaching him the ways of God. Now, in Deuteronomy, it does say that, you know, when you go in and out, sitting at your table, that you're writing, writing it across the doorpost. You're supposed to talk about God all the time. And a lot of people think that younger people do not understand who God is. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. They understand. Um, and it wasn't that, you know, Moses is a type of God, a type, type of Jesus, a shattering of Jesus. But Children understand. I know I had some training with child evangelism, and young kids understood who Jesus was because they were taught on their level. So no doubt, Jacobed or Jacobed was speaking of Jesus, speaking of God on an infant level. She might have been singing, hearing. They were all doing what they were supposed to do towards God in their households, households because there's no other way that that could have happened. How did Moses, you know, become the person he was without the influence of the real deal? Um, Jacobet was a planner. She knew when to put Moses into the reed area, into those reeds, in a place where the water was shallow, but the foliage was thick enough to hold this ark up, and it wouldn't go afloat. Now, if the Baby had gone afloat down the Nile, down the Nile River. There could have been muskrats and crocodiles and all kinds of fish, mosquitoes, everything. But Jacobet was a planner. She planned to put this baby in this ark for protection. And no doubt it was protected from all of these other little rodents and everything that come with being in the marsh. So... Are there people in your life that are protecting you from the harmful things in life? Are you invested in somebody, influencing somebody else so that they can stay on the right path? Think about that. Are you, a, are the, are you the real deal? As an influence, influencer, are you the real deal? Do you care about the life of another to be committed to give them the best foundation that you can with the resources that you do have? So now let's go to Exodus chapter 2, verse number 4. And his sister stood afar off to know what, to be done, what would be done to him. Whose sister? Moses' sister. We're going to call her the watcher influence. Her name was Miriam, and she was Moses' older sister. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. There will be people in your life who just watch you. They just watch to see what becomes of you. They only speak when the time is right. In Exodus chapter 2 and verse 7, then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse him for you? Now let's look at the characteristics of this watcher influence called Miriam. She was... Uh, Johnny on spot. She was quick when she saw Pharaoh's daughter uh, come down to the river to bathe. She was quick with an answer, a solution. Watchers 
have solutions for you at the right time. They don't ask you any questions, but they are problem solvers. And, it's Mir and in Miriam's case, she was courageous because she spoke up to the Pharaoh's daughter. She spoke right on up because, number one, that was her brother, and she wanted to see what happened to him. The watcher influencers in our lives intervene because they can sense that evil is around. They can sense something. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says, For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the rulers of, dark, of this dark age, against hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Watcher influences give a positive and a quick solution to the problems, just like Miriam did. Has anyone been your watcher? And have you been a watcher for someone else? Now let's talk about Pharaoh's daughter for a minute. The daughter of Pharaoh. She came down to the river to bathe. She came down to the Nile to bathe. Why didn't she bathe in the palace? Because I'm sure, because it was a palace, that they may have constructed some kind of crude bathroom in there where they, ir they irrigated the fields so they could have irrigated the house, the palace. But no, she came down to the river to bathe. So I found out that the Nile River was thought of, thought to have um, properties in it for fertility and for fruitfulness. So you see, remember, uh, Pharaoh's daughter was not a believer. She was not a believer. So she was going to do, uh, you know, trying to do some little things to make her life a little better, or maybe she wanted a baby. I don't know. So we're going to call her the substitute influencer. Pharaoh's daughter did not believe in the Hebrew God. As a matter of fact, she came to the Nile to bathe for, they thought it had power to call, like I said, fruitfulness and fertility. And she could have bathed in the palace, but she didn't. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 27, uh, verse 27, chapter 1, it says, But God chooses the foolish things of the world that he might put to shame them that are wise, and God chose the weak things of the world that he might put to shame the things that are strong. At that time, the Hebrew people were growing in number, and the Egyptians thought they were weak, thought the Hebrew people were weak, but yet they were really strong. Right. Did it make sense to, 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 for Pharaoh's, the daughter of Pharaoh to come to the Nile to bathe when she could have bathed probably in the palace? It, didn't make, it doesn't make sense, but that's how God directed things. Right. And she may have wanted to uh, have a child. And maybe, who knows? I'm just using my imagination. This is not in the Bible, that part. Right. <laughs> and, um, and then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked alongside the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby wept. Now, who can resist a, a crying baby? Yeah. Who can resist a crying baby? Well, I don't know now. Sometimes crying babies can get on your nerves. But in this instance, it says that the baby wept. And it maybe melted her heart. I don't know. This is, this is one of the Hebrew children's. It said that so she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. And that's when, um, that's when Miriam, his sister, jumped out. Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. How many know that a lot of times when you, people are influencing your life, things are coming together on your behalf, for your behalf, but you don't even realize what's going on. Right. That has happened to all of us, I'm yeah. sure. Right, Pastor Wilson has said many times how he got to Ebenezer, and he didn't direct his path. God directed his path. Right. And um, so many twists and turns, you cannot call them co coincidences. They have to be the hand and the movement of God. Amen. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away because she went and got Jacobed. And she said, take this child away and nurse him for me, 
Because remember, she wasn't pregnant. She couldn't produce milk. So she had to have some, some of the Hebrew women, somebody was always probably having a baby. But look how God worked. She said, take this child, which was her own child, and nurse him for me, and I will give you wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. So we're, we're saying that, this, that, that uh, the daughter of Pharaoh was a substitute influencer. She was an unbeliever. That doesn't make sense, but God used her anyway. She had the resources. She had the time. She had the compassion and all of the necessary things for Moses to enjoy and to, to utilize. She had everything but the living and the almighty God. And if we are honest, we have to admit that there have been plenty of unbelievers, plenty of them, who, who were uh, influencers in our life, sometimes in a good way and sometimes in a bad way. But they helped us get where we are today. But it was all in God's plan. It was all in God's purpose. And it was for his own glory. Amen. 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 And the last person that we're going to talk about. Um, so, so I'm going back to the... To the ninth verse, then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. Now, The daughter of Pharaoh could never give Moses what Moses' mother, birth mother, gave him, which was the deepest love. She gave him the knowledge of, Jesus, of God. And so we're going to, if you keep reading, you'll find that Moses uh, rejected the Egyptian style, lifestyle, and everything. Because there was a, a hole in his heart. Something was missing. But the final person I want to talk about, and we have to go over to Exodus chapter 4, verse, 20, uh, verse 24. And it says, And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. We're talking about Moses. Moses is grown up now, about 40 years old or maybe 80. I'm not sure. I didn't research his age. But, but he's in... He, 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 he's already killed someone and ran away from Egypt, and he's somewhere else now. He's in Midian. And he's already gotten married. And he has a child. But there's something that Moses didn't do. He did not, well, let me finish reading. And, he, and it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah, his wife, took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. So the, the last influencer that I'm going to talk about is the Redeemer influencer. Zipporah, Moses' wife, did something that Moses failed to do. He failed to circumcise his own son, which was a, the sign of the covenant between God and and the Hebrews, he didn't do it, but his wife did it. She intervened, and this satisfied God, and he decided to spare Moses' life. How many people have we had in our lives that have uh, intervened for us, interceded for us, that saved our life, and we didn't even know it? How many times have you been driving down the street, driving down the highway even, and you look back and you think, how did I get here? I don't even remember passing anything. Or you run through a red light and no cars hit you. There's always an intervention going on. Um, she, she saved Moses' life. She, she intervened to save Moses' life, to save his reputation, to save a heartache. Who have you intervened? Who, who have you intervened into to encourage that they could do the will of God, or that they could be a single person and to raise a child. The, interview, the intervener influencer, the redeemer influencer, may have given you money, 
may have even given you a car. Has anybody ever given you a car? I've given a car away. I know Pastor Woods has given a car away, at least one. Somebody has done something for you to intervene into your life to make your life easier. Something that you needed in the nick of time. Have you been that person for someone? So you see, on Mother's Day, it is really Influencers Day. Happy Influencers Day, y'all. Because we all have been influenced or are influenced by somebody's life. Now, the story of Moses and the people who influenced him is nothing compared to the influence of Jesus Christ upon our lives. If you have listened carefully, you may have heard the characteristics of Jesus played out. Our Christ loves us, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave, can y'all finish it? His only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have, amen. Jesus, the influencer, is the real deal. Matthew 2 and 6. Jesus is the watcher. Proverbs 15, 6. He keeps a watch over the wicked and the good. Jesus is the protector. Psalms 121, verses 7 and 8. The Lord will keep you from all harm, and he will watch over your coming and going, not just sometimes, but forevermore. Jesus is the substitute, Romans 5 and 6. For while we were yet still helpless, and at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. He is the Redeemer. John 8 and 3, 6 says, so if the Son says you're free, you will be free indeed. Amen? Yes, Jesus, the greatest influencer, died on the cross for our sins, but he's living, and he rose from the grave, and he wants, you, wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give me eternal life. He has given me eternal life. Ask him to be yours today. Let his love and his influence shape, mold, and direct your life. He's waiting to be your ultimate influencer. Let's pray. Precious Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the attentive ears that we're hearing. I pray, Heavenly Father, that the words that, are, that were spoken today will just seep deep into someone's heart. We thank you for all the mothers today, all the great mothers, all the loving kindness, all the funny things, all the sad things, all the things that we can remember about our moms, past or present. We ask special blessings for the ones who are hurting today, who are bereaved today. We thank you, Lord God, for sending people into the lives, into all of our lives to help guide us and direct us because it's by your direct will, Lord God. We pray for those that do not know you, that are like the Egyptians who serve other gods. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the Almighty, the living God, the words will seep into their hearts, Heavenly Father, and that they will see their sin and turn from their wicked ways. Realize that Jesus is the only way. You are the answer. Father God, thank you for this moment in time. And we bless you. We love you, Lord God. We count it joy to serve in your kingdom, Heavenly Father. Let us all, Heavenly Father, be courageous enough to be influencers in somebody's life. Let us all be thoughtful enough and compassionate enough in this dark and evil day and time to invest in somebody's life. We thank you, Lord God, for everything. And even for those that are graduating from college, high school and all, we thank you, Lord God. We ask that you direct their paths to something successful, what you call successful, Heavenly Father. Give protection for the, young, for the younger people that are going out there into this world to find jobs and, and to live a life according to your will. We realize there are grieving mothers today who have lost children. And I ask peace upon their soul today. Father God, we love you and we thank you. For this is in Jesus' name that we ask this prayer. Amen.